Hi, I'm Joshua Bell, and as you can see, I'm a violinist, and I'm here in Toronto performing with the great double bass player Edgar Meyer and uh, Peter Unjin and the Toronto Symphony. This violin, well, this violin has had a lot of history. It's had 300 years of history. Uh, it was made in 1713 by the, the biggest name in violin making, um, Antonio Stradivari or Stradivarius, as some people call. This is one of the finest instruments ever made. It's, it's worth many millions of dollars because there are so few of them. It's an instrument I fell in love with about 12 years ago, and I managed to mortgage my life away and, and get it. And, uh, and it's my companion. Uh, I, I only play on this, on this instrument. You know, these, these violins are sold, uh, traded and sold quite a bit because they're such collector's items. And, Many people buy them just for investments as well, and so they're, they're, but they're getting harder and harder to find the great Stradivarius. They're disappearing into collections and museums, and so that's why the value has gone up and up. When this just came on the market, I happened to be in London where it was being sold, and I was playing a concert the very same night at the Royal Albert Hall, and uh, so the timing for me was, it was, was perfect, and I, uh, I was coming into a violin shop just to buy some strings, and they said, you have to check this out. We have the Hubermann Strad, the great Hubermann Strad, which was very famous also from the fact that it was stolen from Hubermann, who was one of the great violinists of the 20th, early 20th century. And it was stolen from him, so it's, it's, got a, it's a notorious instrument that I knew already knew about. So I played a few notes on it, and that was it. I, I was hooked. I said, I want that instrument. And, and uh, I, even the same night, I played on it at the Albert Hall, and I've never played on any other instrument. Having a violin like this, you, you, have, to, you have to keep it cleaned and have to keep it maintained. There's, uh, there are certain people that I would trust with this violin and, and you know, one in London, one or two in New York that I would let have their hands, on, put their hands on it. Um, they're like violin doctors, you know, and, and I have to take it into the seams come apart occasionally. This violin, when it was recovered from the thief who stole it, he kept it for 50 years and played the violin from 1936 until 1986. He played on it, he stole it from the dressing room of Hubermann at, Car at Carnegie Hall in New York. And he was a violinist and the thief played on it for 50 years and never showed it to any, any violin expert because they would know immediately that, that he has a, a Strad. So it was, after 50 years, it was completely covered in grime. And in fact, I think he put shoe polish on it to, to hide the fact that it was a great instrument. Um, so when it was recovered, they spent nine months just cleaning it, just to get the, just get, to get the uh, grime off the top, and they had to be very careful, like cleaning the Sistine Chapel. You know, the the, the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. They, they, uh, and underneath, after um, all that laborious process, they uncovered this great red varnish, which is still in amazing condition. So, so, and the condition is very reflect uh, is reflected in the price as well. <laughs> a lot of people, because when they hear that it's a violin that's worth millions of dollars, like they they're worried that how would you even pick it up and not worry about it. The only way, only way I can, uh, only analogy I can make is that, the, is that picking up a baby. You know, a mother does pick up a baby which is completely priceless, or a father, of course, and I've had three myself. Um, and you think it's irreplaceable, and like when you get, maybe when you get your first baby, you think, oh God, what am I, am I going to break it? But after a while, you, it's, it's, you get used to it, and, and you used to get used to carrying around something that is just, there is no replacing. And so, um, so I'm so used to violin in my hand, it's just, uh, but I wouldn't let uh, anyone else pick it up. <laughs>